And I know that a lot of you guys would want to be on boats right now. And I will be very honest with you. Right now, I, I would give a lot to be home. That's, that's harsh light. Hello and welcome to Saint Martin. It is currently 2 a.m. and um, I've been on watch for three hours. Now you may ask yourself, but Sophie, why are you on watch? You're not even sailing. And good question, Alex. Unfortunately, Saint Martin is known for petty theft and looting. It was particularly bad after the island was hit by Irma. And so when everybody started to be on lockdown and the crime risk increased, the cruising community decided to organize itself to look over the boat at night. So we take turns doing night watches between boats. Tonight was my turn. I am officially done watching, which is why I can afford to ruin my night vision with this absolutely terrible light. Oh. And uh, with that said, I am extremely tired. Obviously, we have a lot to talk about. But before we do that, I really need to go to bed. So, see you tomorrow. This is not the end of the video, by the way, so, uh, so stay tuned. I just need to go to bed before we carry on. Good night! Bloody day, stuck in a traffic jam. Swamped on a busy street. Now it's feeling like a clam. Already on the edge, there's a timber on the rise. The tiger smiles at me and say, Life could be so simple, but taking the day away. Can't I for some loving? Go to some other place. I'm watching an old time movie. Follow the clouds go by. And drift in the sky. It's May the 4th. Okay, so it is Monday morning, May the 4th, be with you. It is five minutes above 8 a.m. 
And this morning, the one thing that's on our mind, and it's been on our mind since the beginning of this lockdown eight weeks ago, is how we're gonna escape hurricane season. Our plans have changed at least 10 times since March. For those of you who are non-sailor, hurricane season is both a meteorological phenomenon that occurs every year between around August to November, December, but it's also an insurance phenomenon because our insurance asks us to be above or below a certain latitude between June and November. Trouble is, because of coronavirus, my visa issue, and a combination of both, I was absolutely unable to get a visa for us to go to the US and meet our insurance criteria to go north. We are going to go south. The problem that we have is that all borders are closed. They've been closed for many weeks. And even though restrictions inland are starting to loosen up a little bit, everybody's talking about deconfinement, there are no talks about border openings. And I know that there is an inter-island council in the Caribbean that has talked about the situation of sailboats. We have not heard anything. It is the beginning of May and everybody is obviously starting to get really concerned about hurricane season. Now the situation this year is extra special because there have never been so many boats in the Caribbean. A lot of boats, I mean all the sailboats that wanted to take the Panama Canal and go sail the Pacific Ocean are stuck in the Caribbean. So everybody is trying to figure out where they're gonna go. There is a big rally of boats, of US boats, going up to the US, which we, I mean, cannot participate in. And uh, everybody is trying to figure out where they're gonna go, which means that yards are really full. It's a little bit chaotic. Ryan and I have decided that we are going to try to go home to Sweden for hurricane season. Luckily, right now we are in France and the French islands are open to EU boat, which uh, we are. So one of the plans that we've had was to leave the boat in Martinique at the yard and take a repatriation flight home to Sweden. But first we need to know if we have a spot at the yard in Martinique. And back in March we asked Martinique for a quote in the yard and the final step to book our spot in the yard was to pay down the deposit. And the deposit was super expensive and it was non-refundable. And at that time, we were afraid that, uh, because regulation was changing all the time, that there may be a new regulation preventing us from entering Martinique. And when we asked the yard, they were unable to say if we would be able to get a refund if a new regulation was to be put in place and prevented us from arriving in Martinique. So, with that said, we're now pretty set on the Martinique plan. It's a huge logistical hassle, but essentially sail from Saint-Martin to Martinique, haul out the boat in Le Marin, where we made landfall a few months ago. Oh, at first being quarantined for two weeks, because there is that, obviously. And then take a flight from Fort de France to Paris, and then from Paris to Stockholm. And there we would have an apartment. Whew! So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to call the yard in Martinique and uh, innocently ask them if I can pay my deposit to book our spot that we initiated like a month ago. So guys, pray that they still have a spot for us. Because if they don't, I don't know what we're going to do. Oui, bonjour madame, je vous appelle car nous avions fait une demande de devis il y a un petit moment et j'aimerais euh, payer la compte pour réserver notre place. Alors, euh, est-ce que c'est possible de vous, est-ce que vous pourriez appeler demain parce que euh, quand il y a beaucoup de changements, moi j'ai pas envie de prendre quelque chose que vous voyez parce que est-ce que c'est valable, vous, vous voyez un petit peu la personne qui, qui s'occupe, elle, elle sera demain. Ok, est-ce que vous savez s'il y a toujours de la place ou euh, c'est... Justement, comme, comme il y a beaucoup de réservations, peut-être entre temps, peut-être qu'il n'y a plus de place, donc moi je pas... D'accord, ok, c'est qui la personne euh, Jocelyne. C'est Jocelyne, d'accord, donc demain à partir de quelle heure À partir de 8h. Ok, très bien, bah, je rappellerai demain. Ok, ok, 
Salut. Merci. Je vous en prie, madame. Au revoir. Au revoir. So. <laughs> What's up? She wants me to call tomorrow so that I can talk to the person who's in charge. I ask her, is there still spots? And she's like, well, that's the thing. There is a lot of demand. So maybe since you ask for your quote, maybe there isn't a spot anymore. So... <sighs> Probably not. Probably. We're going to get a spot. Yes. Things always work out for us. Mm, no, they don't. They do. <laughs> they do. They actually do. It's because we see the positive in things. Yeah. And when something doesn't work out, we make something else work. They, they work out. They work out. Or we make it work out. Alright, well we try tomorrow. Five times. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sitting in a lagoon in St. Martin right now. Uh, we've been in the same spot for over two months uh, under complete lockdown. Yeah, so it's... Uh, it's actually a pretty crappy situation. We uh, there's no flights in or out, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's pretty bad. So we're uh, we're trying to figure out uh, our next moves, but it's uh, it's really complicated. So, um, anyways, <laughs> here we are. I told uh, I told Thomas this morning when we were talking that uh, I should probably put a shirt on for this call. <laughs> I have to be honest with you guys, this is a little hard to make this video because for the last eight weeks we have received a lot of unwanted opinions on our situations from people who are not here. And also just technically it's just difficult to be on the foredeck and record because it's really windy and I'm afraid that the soundtrack that I'm going to get out of this is not going to be very good. I'm going to try to see if I can't find a better place behind a mast or something. So let's start with how we ended up here. Uh, back in March, Ryan had to fly back to Sweden for work and it'd been the third time that he had to fly back since we arrived in the Caribbean. So we had to book very last minute flight from St. Martin. We rushed here, put the boat in the marina, hopped in a flight and got in Stockholm. As we were in Stockholm, the pandemic unraveled to the point where we were starting to get worried if we were ever gonna make it back to the boat. And for us, it was never a question if we should make it back to the boat. Pool Steel is our home and there was no way that we were going to leave her alone in St. Martin. At the time we got back to St. Martin, we really didn't know how things were going to turn out, but we knew that potentially we were going to be stuck here for a while, which is why we decided to be here in this spot in the lagoon. So because in the lagoon, the water doesn't move that much. And if we were going to spend weeks in a place, we didn't want to be exposed to swell. And that part we actually get right because we have friends who've been spending weeks on anchor and for several days on end, they were seasick. And if you can imagine yourself being stuck on the boat, seasick for days on end, that's... So fast forward after we arrived in the lagoon and picked this spot, things started to really unravel in terms of the lockdown and the regulation on the Dutch side and on the French side. We ended up anchoring right by the border between the French side and the Dutch side. At that time, we were living more on the Dutch side because that's just what's closer to us. At that time, we really didn't go too much to the French side because although we are checked in in France, all the facilities are relatively remote. For us, it's a 20 to 40 minutes dinghy ride to get to the town. The French side and the Dutch side seem to be coordinating their efforts, but not really. So on April 1st, a couple of weeks after friends decided to impose a strict lockdown, the Dutch side went on a 24 hours curfew for two weeks. And yeah, on the 1st of April, no joke, we found ourselves on the better side of the St. Martin lockdown. Hey guys, Sophie from the future here. I was editing this video and I was like, ooh, I sound like I complained a lot. I didn't make this video to complain. Clearly, we are not the ones having it the worst. We have friends and family both on the front line, uh, working in healthcare and in hospitals being sick. We also have friends and family who have lost their jobs in this pandemic and clearly, 
those are probably the ones who are the most impacted. With that said, we've had a few friends uh, telling us that we were the winners of this lockdown and uh, I just wanted to offer a little more nuanced perspective on our situation. So let, let's get back to where we were. Here on the French side, the lockdown involves you not being able to go out of your house for anything else than groceries or emergencies. You can go out for one hour a day within a one kilometer radius of your house. And that works in theory, but in reality for us boaters, it can be difficult to do because one, beaches are closed. So you cannot let your dinghy anywhere but at designated dinghy docks. And those dinghy docks for us are at least 15 to 20 to 30 to 40 minutes away from our boat. So by the time we reach the dinghy dock, our hour that we can spend outside of our house is, we're pretty far in. The good thing is we can actually do groceries and that's very nice. We've been doing groceries a couple of times. We really try to not go to the store too much. I think that uh, uh, each time that we've been going, we've provisioned for two or three weeks and we may have organized smuggling operations to get some groceries to our boat friends on the Dutch side who aren't as lucky as we were. What we've struggled the most with is exercise. Swimming behind your boat is forbidden. It is actually something that you can be fined for doing. The police has fined someone who was cleaning his hull and got a 135 euros fine. So we don't swim behind the boat. France has also prohibited water sports. So we can't kayak, we can't paddle, we can't, we, we just cannot be on the water, which is fine because the water is actually really, really, really disgusting. The lagoon is really shallow and we are about a hundred boats in the lagoon. And because we are prohibited from navigating, we cannot go to the dock to pump out our black water. I don't think there is actually a facility on the island and we, we cannot go offshore to dump our black water. Okay, it's Sophie from the future again. You may ask yourself, but you could very easily take out your boat from Anchorage and go a little farther or at night or whatever. I forgot to mention the fact that in order for a boat to access the lagoon, you have to go through a series of bridges on the Dutch side and there is another bridge on the French side. The bridge on the French side is broken, so it's not going to work. And the bridges on the Dutch side are not operated at the moment and you have to have authorizations and special derogations for you to be able to exit. So yeah, the moment that we learned that the Dutch bridges were not operated, the word lockdown uh, took a whole new meaning. All of the boat's sewage has been going out in the lagoon, which in regular time is a huge no-no. It is, it is so bad. This is something that, that nobody does, but literally for the last eight weeks, we haven't had a choice. It is in that same water that we've been running our water maker because guys, we cannot survive eight weeks on our very limited water resources. We're actually lucky to have a water maker but every time that we use it, I think about how disgusting the water is and... Uh... <sighs> but we're not the ones who have it the worst. We have had friends telling us the story of how local authorities harassed boaters and even local population expressed in various ways their... How can I put that in a nice way? Their reluctance to have boaters around. And in some cases, countries have kicked out boats from anchorages and forced them out of the country. So we're actually lucky to be able to be here, but we're also not home. We are a burden. We're a burden to local authorities, which have a lot to deal with these days with this pandemic. And the boats on anchor in their waters is the very last of their priority at the moment. So we're all just trying to cohabit. It's been uh, eight weeks that we are here at this exact same spot. I can count on one hand the amount of time that my feet have touched land. And, um, and I know that a lot of you guys would want to be on boats right now. And I will be very honest with you. Right now, I, I would give a lot to be home. Because yeah, our boat is our house, but we're not home. We're just, we're a burden. And uh, and that's a weight that only we carry.
<laughs> Welcome to the spot where I spend about 99% of my awake time in this lockdown. The one question that we get asked the most in the context of this lockdown is how we keep ourselves busy during the day and this is, this is what I do. The only problem that we've had is internet because as you may have experienced yourself, everybody is on internet these days. So it is now 12.40 and I know that internet is going to be a struggle until probably 11 tonight. Right now it's... Ah, it's just... It's not working great. Uh, all right, it is um, 2 30 and I should probably make some lunch. Something, whatever. This is how our days go. Time just flies. I'm gonna make an omelette. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, during this lockdown I went through two phases. The first one was uh, the, the fighting period where I was, uh, I was super motivated. I would do sourdough bread, I would bake every day. I was on top of the food game. Yeah. And then the second phase I just uh, I kind of lost it. I went lazy. Yeah, I understand. This is when you know that you're doing vlog, right? It's when you talk to the camera and your boyfriend responds. What, are you on the camera? Yeah, I was filming. Oh, I didn't know that. I was telling the world about the... I was, I was telling the world about the two faces that I had with food. <laughs> How's he going, Ryan? Well, I've got a problem with the part. What is Votroi Society? Vot... Three society. We all like a good Ryan tries to speak French the, moment. The three society. society. Tell me, show me. Society. Ah, votre société. That was pretty close. What does that mean? Your it's company. Okay, but like seriously, how has the lockdown been for you? I'm bored. I want to do stuff. But then again, I don't think I've had it, taken it as hard as you have, to be very honest. No. Like you're constantly kind of just, and I've just been, meh. Yeah, it's been, so, it's been pretty hard for me. Yeah, I think I've been a lot better. Look, I made a delicious omelette. It looks good, it smells good. It's uh, basically eggs and bacon. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Should we eat? It's three now. Yeah, we God. should Because I need to work out in an hour. Still on. How is it three already? I don't know. Day? I don't know. I sat myself in front of the laptop and all of a sudden it was it was 2.30 and I was like, probably make lunch. Mm. Okay, so it is now almost 3.30 and it's time to run the water maker. But first we need to change the filters because lagoon water is somewhat it's a little dirty, but disgusting. Not. Yeah. When was the last time we changed this? A month ago. I've been using it a lot though. So today we're gonna have to be rebels. The water maker is not working. We don't have really a lot of water getting in the low pressure pump. And when we checked the strainer under the sink, which is the very first filter that gets water from the sea into the water maker system, there seemed to be some kind of blockage before the strainer. So Ryan's gonna have to dive to go check the through hole see if anything gets stuck in there which is a bit of a violation of the regulations we're not really supposed to swim around our boat at all but uh, we also really need water so today we're going to be rebels this water is disgusting No, something's off, Ryan. Did, did you hear that? It was a huge splash. Uh, 
I'm set. So really the water maker is what is saving our butts right now. We have a few friends on Anchor that don't have that luxury and the way that they refill their tank is by going to a dock which is quite far away from where we're anchored and transport jerry canes of water and they have to go back and forth several times to fill the jerry canes. It's not great. So it is now 5.25 and three times a week at 5.30 I joined a Zoom workout session with one of my favorite PT in the world. It's in five minutes so I'd better move myself. How did I be, how, how was I late? How was I late for this? I need my phone. Where's my phone? Here's my phone. I need the phone. So the big challenge that I have with those workouts is this, the space that I have, which is, it's really not a lot. And uh, I don't really have, I don't really have a, a plain flat surface. Uh, it's all bumps from, uh, you know, the windlass, from the hatches. Um, but I do have a couple of uh, dumbbells. They are 17 pounds and I have bands, elastic bands, and we even have a TRX, but uh, I don't really use the TRX for, uh, for those workouts. Uh, we have this yoga mat that we've never done yoga on, but that's uh, super practical to do those little workouts. And uh, man, this last month and a half, we've really gotten some good use out of this uh, very little gym equipment. So what I usually do is that I join the Zoom meeting on my phone, which is a really little screen, and uh, I put the audio in my, in my little speaker here. So I take the audio with me and I try to follow what's going on, but sometimes because of the light, I can't really see what's on the screen, uh, but I make it work. It's definitely better than if I was trying to do it myself. Ah, there we go. Oh my God, this is going to be a... Today has been a really, really bad internet day. And uh, I think that I've just missed five minutes of the workout because internet is really bad. So I'm hoping that. Uh... Hello! Okay, so we're doing our pulses, leg raises. One, two, three, oh, five, yeah. four. Definitely three, missing the beginning of the two, workout. One. Now we're going to point that on. Six, seven, eight, one, I have no idea what we're doing. Three, four, five, six, so I'll seven, just do squats. Eight, seven, Oh, that hurt. Nice job, you guys. Did somebody say something? Okay, so looking straight down, put the forearm on the support system, take your right leg out behind you, straight out, point the toe, lift that leg, and pull. One, two, three, seven, eight, eight. Ah! Oh. Seven, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, 
Can it be? And then it kills you. <laughs> They're deceptively evil, aren't they? <laughs> yes, that would be a way to describe it. Three, uh, two. Now we're gonna slow it down. Uh, One side. Uh, Rock it up. Cross one leg over, and then twist into that bent knee. What? Are we stretching? Yeah, we're done. Oh my God, yes. Woo! <laughs> so every night when uh, the workout ends, uh, I usually show the ladies the, the sunset uh, because it looks very pretty, especially from my phone. <laughs> you can only see the sunset, so it will actually be fun to show, show them this video of you know, how it is behind the workout that we share three times a week. All right, Sophie. Oh, that was a hard one. Let here. see it. Here, here. It's quite, it's a little early today. I don't know if it's because the sun is setting a little later, but... Uh, is it? Yeah, I don't know. It's right there. Yay. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. All right, guys. I'll see you, on, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Tomorrow. Bye! Bye bye! <gasps> oh, Zoom meetings. The epitome of the Corona experience. <laughs> A couple of years ago, we were playing a game with some friends and the game was based on question that you would ask and someone would have to come with the perfect scenario to answer a certain situation. And one of the questions in that game was, what would you do to escape zombie apocalypse? And at that time, for me, the plan was obvious. We would jump on our boat, we would have the water maker to make water and we would provision the boat and we would fish to have food and we would go to the ocean where literally no, nothing can happen to us. And it was very cute. <laughs> and of course, the boat is the perfect place because we're so used to be self-sufficient here. The only thing in this scenario that I had, that I didn't really think about because it was a stupid game, is that zombie apocalypse is still going on and there is no way to escape the emotional and mental impact that zombie apocalypse would have on you. There is no way to escape the grief that you feel when the world changes. There is no way to escape the distress that you feel when you find out that your friends are sick and in the hospital. I have struggled a lot for the last eight weeks and it's been even harder to open up about it because because so many people have this image of our life in lockdown as as the perfect life and it's just not like that just because uh, we're on the boat and uh, and it's sunny and yes there is a beautiful sunset but uh, it merely is a little balm on my heart when when I'm sad for a friend 
and regardless of the circumstances that we are in there is literally nobody on earth these days that haven't had their life completely turned upside down by this stupid virus <sighs> So there it is, guy. This is the video of our lockdown in paradise, which, if you ask me, doesn't really feel like paradise. All right, with that said, I need to go make some dinner <laughs> because we need to eat. But we had lunch at three, so I'm not even that hungry. Hello! Hi. What are you doing? Work. How's that going for you? Good. It's really humid tonight. Yeah. Are you on watch tonight? I'm on watch 11 to 2. But not too bad if you only have to do it once a week. Not too bad. By the time this video is published, the French side of Saint Martin will have relaxed a lot of the rules in place for the lockdown. And we're hoping that when you watch this video, life will be a little easier. The island of St. Martin, where we are currently anchored, is highly reliant on tourism for its income. And these days, so many people have lost their jobs and are struggling to feed themselves. And just because the rules are relaxed a little bit doesn't mean that tourists are coming back yet. And so many people are struggling to put food on their plates. Which is why with a boat friend of ours we organized a little fundraising to help the habitants of Saint Martin who have been the most impacted. And if you're interested in participating, I uh, convinced our friend Rich on Sayonara to not close the golf on me quite yet to uh, maybe give you guys an opportunity to uh, make a little donation. So I will put the link to the GoFundMe in the description below and uh, if if you can, if you can afford it, um, and if you want to help the people of the beautiful island of uh, Saint Martin, be sure that uh, it will be very highly appreciated. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you are safe. I hope that you are feeling the effect of the relaxation of the lockdown, wherever it is that you live. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> Let us know how you are doing in the, in the comment section. Next week, I think that we're gonna talk about how we're gonna escape hurricane season. When the video was filmed, our plan had changed 10 times. Right now, our plan has changed 100 times. <laughs> so we'll talk about that next week. And until then, I wish you a great day and uh, I'll, I'll see you very soon. Bye.